global warming is connected to consciousness. And that would take a long time to explain, but everything that happens on the Earth, the angle, the axis of the Earth, and our orbit around the Earth, all these things affect how we interpret the one reality that we were talking about. Global warming is nothing new. Of course it's happened before. It's, it's, we've traced it back 240 million years. And uh, there's been a cycle going on for uh, a very long time. Uh, uh, there's a man named Dr. John Hamaker. His work was significant, and that was in, uh, I believe it was the late 60s or so, when he presented that information to the world. Hardly anybody ever brings them up. But he went around to uh, ancient lake beds all over the world and took uh, core samples that were six inches uh, in diameter and 11 feet deep. And he could see back into about 200 and something million years in, the, in these uh, core samples. And they can just read this. And what they discovered was is that the ice ages have been very periodic. Uh, basically, the ice ages are about 90,000 years long, and the warm periods are about 10,000. They actually range from about 8 to 12, but they're about 10,000 years long. And, uh, and so you see what they found in the lake beds was you see 90,000 years, approximately, of no pollen because it's just ice and uh, no growth of plants or anything else like that. And, uh, and then followed by a little period of eight to 10, 12,000 years, about 10,000 years long, of where there's pollen, followed by another 90,000 years of no, no pollen. And it just went like a clock, going down in for millions and millions and millions and millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. And so, sure, this is nothing new. But to say that it's no big deal, when we go from a, uh, a warm period into an ice age, that's a big deal because the average temperature of the Earth drops to minus 50 degrees below zero average in 72 hours. And that's been scientifically proven. In three days, it drops. And so uh, most of the life on the Earth, if that were to happen, would, would die, would perish. It's always happened that way. It's, it's part of life. It's, it's the way Mother Earth has set it up. So we can't say it's bad or wrong. It just is. And, uh, and so uh, th those people were able to track exactly what the Ice Age was tied to. And we now know it's not a, it's not a theory. Well, everything is a theory in a way because we, don't, we, we never know what life is going to do for sure this next time around. It's like the sun coming up in the morning is a theory. Even though it's been coming up every single time, maybe this time it won't. <laughs> you know, you don't know that for sure. Yeah. But, uh, but the probability is very high. And, um, and what, what John Hamaker found was that the Ice Ages were tied to minerals, the minerals that are in the dirt. Uh, when we, we can start on the end of an ice cycle. When the dirt all over the, the earth, all over the, all over the world, runs out of minerals, and, and, it's, and it's finite, there's a certain amount in there, when they run out, um, the trees begin to die, and they get weak, and diseases start coming in. The pine trees were here in the United States, uh, they say the, the beetles are killing them. It's not the beetles. If you go deeper into that, there's six diseases hurting those trees, and those trees, are getting, their immune systems are getting weak, and the beetles just come in and finish them off. But if they were healthy, they wouldn't, the beetles wouldn't be able to do this. And so in every, uh, when the trees begin to die, the forest fires begin to happen, and, uh, and every acre of trees, just an average acre of trees, holds 50,000 tons of carbon dioxide. And so when these forest fires grew through, through millions of acres, it's releasing massive amounts of, of carbon dioxide into the air, which begins the, the, the uh, greenhouse effect. So even if there was no people here on Earth at all, not any at all, uh, this, effect, this is still going to happen. And, uh, and so the plant life holds all of this massive amount of carbon dioxide. As it dies and as it burns and goes into there, it goes back into the atmosphere and that begins the greenhouse effect. We just happen to be adding to it. We're accelerating it. We're cutting several hundred years of our life off by what we're doing. We don't know exactly how much, 
but three, four, five hundred years, we may have been able to go longer. But because of what we're doing, we're cutting the we're bringing the ice age closer to us by adding more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and other chemicals. At the end of the ice age, or, right, or at the end of the warm period, which is what we're at right now, we've been ten thousand years of warm. And when we get to the end, uh, uh, the minerals run out, the trees die, and everything, and it, it goes up in there. It be, the the Greenhouse effect begins to happen, and that begins to warm up the oceans. And uh, right now, the oceans around the equator are like 86 degrees. That's not normal. They're very warm. That produces vast amounts of, of uh, water that goes in the air, tracks over, goes to the two poles, and uh, begins to build the ice up. But at the same time, uh, the warm temperature begins to melt this ice. And so, uh, uh, now there is another factor in this which Dr. John Hamaker didn't understand, and uh, and that is uh, the ocean currents and how they hold the uh, uh, the weather patterns. The patterns that we know, like uh, you know, in Germany they have a certain time when spring comes and when you know in certain days, and it's different all over the world. Sahara Desert doesn't get rain, but thirteen thousand years ago the Sahara Desert was a, was a rainforest. And so things change. And why do they change? Because uh, what one of the reasons, not the only one, but one of the reasons is that the, these ocean currents change. They, uh, we tend to think that the way the life has been on Earth for the last 150 years is the way it's kind of always been. But in fact, the climate that we're now living in is only 150 years old. That's it. Uh, before that, we had an entirely different climate, and uh, and that was because the ocean currents in the 1300s slowed down in the Atlantic Ocean, caused causing what in history they call the Little Ice Age, and it was a temporary time of a drop in temperature because the ocean currents, which we'll explain in a minute, uh, uh, control these weather patterns, and it began to slow down. That causes, uh, like in the United States, that causes the eastern seaboard to go extremely cold and the west, where we are now, to go into a drought. And so you can begin to trace all kinds of things. With when it went in the 1300s, by the 1770-something, when our country was, you know, when George Washington was here, and you look at paintings of him going across the Delaware, you see these giant chunks of ice floating down the Delaware because we were in the middle of a mini ice age taking place, but it only lasted from... 1300 to 1850, and then the currents kick back in again, and we're back into a warm climate all over again. Uh, the Anasazi, which are another ancient group of people that lived here in the United States in the Four Corners area, they can't understand why they disappeared. You know, they, they said, well, why did they, it look like they just left in a single day and disappeared? But they didn't tie the, the, the weather pattern breakdown at that time. And what happened was there were 46 years without a drop of rain in this area. And they had no choice. They, all the underground aquifers and everything else dried up and they had to leave. We could see from the satellites and from the things that, that the ocean current, especially the Atlantic Ocean current, was slowing down dramatically and had reached a stage of slowdown that was equal to the way it was in the 1300s meaning that we would be followed by at least a mini ice age very quickly after that.